The African Democratic Congress, ADC, has appointed Mani Ahmed, a presidential aspirant in 2015, as the chairman of the party's board of trustees. Mr. Ahmed emerged the party's BOT chairman at the end of the Emergency National Working Committee meeting and Critical Stakeholders meeting on Tuesday. The party also suspended Ibrahim Manzo, former national vice chairman, Northeast, and 17 state chairman, for anti-party activities and utterances aimed at bringing the ADC to disrepute. Now, according to the party's statement, activities of the suspended officials contravened Article 15 of the party's constitution. The statement urged all ADC executives at ward, local government and state levels to continue structuring the party at the grassroots for campaign to take off and encourage the party candidate at all levels not to be distracted by the activities of a few members, but to remain focused ahead of 2023's general election. Well, joining us live is George Ashiru. He's the ADC Lagos State Chairman. Mr. Ashiru, so good to have you join us. It's my pleasure. Good evening. Great. Uh, this statement that has been issued by the party, um, because of the recent happenings within the party where we first heard that the presidential candidate was suspended. Uh, and then, of course, we also saw members of the party at the highest echelon saying that they are going to work to make sure that the party does not crash before the elections. And then now we're hearing a suspension of 17 party chairmen. Are you included in those chairmen who have been suspended? No, I'm not, uh, not that I'm aware of. So what exactly really is going on within the party? Uh, the party is going through transition. I mean, let's look at it this way. We're fighting ourselves over ideology, We're not over stolen government money. We don't have, uh, we're not in charge of the coffers of Nigerian government. We don't have the resources of some of the larger parties that has come out of whatever activities they have as governors or whatever. So anything we are, as uh, uh, we're fighting over as a party, it's, it's based on purely on ideology. We have people who want to transition the party, and we have those who think stability is important. My own position as a chairman in Lagos State, I am not suspended, and um, is that we have a family, and we have issues going on in the party at the moment, and I'm one of those trying my best to reach out to all concerned parties uh, to make sure that we come back as a family and we go forward to this election uh, as a unit uh, ready to take on the challenges of governing this country when given the opportunity by Nigerians. So I am not inclined uh, to be carried away by the various uh, challenges that the party is facing or the back and forth between different members of the same family. Uh, the position I'm taking as a chairman of the state, and this is a position of the state, is that we are going to be one of those that would reach out to everyone concerned and try and bring them back together so we can face the greater battle, which is for the soul of Nigeria. Might I ask, because, I mean, you mentioned about the, you know, the issue of ideology being at the core of the crisis that your party is facing. Might I ask what the ideology of the ADC is, if there be any? Well, I, essentially, ADC is a transformational party. It sees itself as, uh, we see ourselves, really, as a party that wants to move from the old conservative way of governing and leadership to a more transformational method of leadership where we're focusing on policies, not on godfatherism, not built around individuals, but built around ideas and thoughts and solutions to the problems of Nigeria. And those are the kinds of people that have come up to lead the party in different places. And of course, when you have, you know, like in the past one year, we've had a lot of people that have joined the party that came with different presidential aspirants. And all of these people want uh, to impose or to suggest or to bring forth to transition ideas about how the party can be better uh, governed internally and how we can also face the challenges of governing as a country, uh, if you govern the country as a party when we're given the chance by the citizenry, the electorate. And I think that's what's happening. So it's a lot of, um, a lot of movements going on internally within the party for the past six months, definitely, certainly before the primaries. And what you're just seeing now is, is, is a bubbling to the surface of ideas and ideologies. And uh, our job as leaders is to find a way to bring everybody together and comfort with something that is comforting to all parties concerned. Let's talk about the 
governorship primaries um, in Lagos State that, um, I mean, immediately after that, we saw some people leave the party, especially one of your governorship candidates, uh, Mr. Braithwaite. Um, there have also been allegations of shortchanging and, of course, corruption within the party, which led to certain aggrieved members leaving the party, especially some who would say they were the heart and soul of that party here in Lagos. Would you like to comment? Well, I'm hearing this for the first time because I, as a chairman of the party in Lagos, conducted that Congress, I uh, congratulated both the Congress <clears throat> and the primaries. And what we had were two gladiators, two brothers, two people that shook hands the day before the primaries, two people that promised me that whatever uh, comes out of the primaries, they will remain in the party and build the party, knowing fully well that no party is perfect, no group of people are perfect, everyone comes with their faults, and the reason we join is to fix it, not to run away from it. And it, that was that was the... Uh, philosophy within which we went through the primaries. And I called both candidates the day of the election and I wished them good luck. And I said, is everything okay? Prior to that, we had a stakeholders meeting and we put up every single requirement for these uh, primaries. And we asked them, are you okay? And we have the videos and the pictures and everybody said it was okay. And then we went to the primaries and you know it's politics. It's aspirants who do whatever they need to do to win their ticket. That's why they invested nomination fee. And our job was to provide a level playing field for both of them. And whoever did his homework or did their homework got the ticket. And as far as we're concerned in Lagos State, we're one of the few states in the whole country where we actually had contested primaries. Only two or three states had contested primaries. And we had over 600, and 600 plus people in that hall making their choices. Now, and that's what democracy is all about. People make their choices. And once they make their choices, you know, as a true Democrat, you learn to live with it, you grow with it, you build on it. And I think that's basically what has happened. And um, this is probably the first time the party has had a chance to respond to uh, any such allegations. The suspension of these, um, you know, chairmen of, of, at different, um, you know, levels or the chairman for different states in the party. Um, what does this signal to those who are supposedly looking to political parties as yours, um, as opposed to the major political parties in the country and hoping for something different instead of what we're seeing play out? Well, every party in Nigeria is a reflection of the society itself. We have a very diverse party, diverse memberships, like I said, diverse ideologies and thoughts. And what has bubbled to the surface is old guard, new guard, new troop, old troop, old commanders, new commanders, you know, coming together and not finding a middle ground, you know, to accommodate each other. Again, like I said, it's a leadership challenge that I personally, as, uh, as a chairman of a state and as an individual, will continue reaching out to all the parties to make sure that we can come together. We didn't join the party so that we can divide ourselves. We came to party to unite the country. So we have to unite ourselves. And the way we unite ourselves is a signal to everybody that we can unite the country. And that's one of the things that we're going to do. I personally am making a promise on behalf of all the members of the party across the 36 states that I'll do whatever I can do to reach out to everyone uh, aggrieved within and without to ensure that we're all back together and we're on the campaign trail. Talking about the campaign, what is the structure of the ADC in Lagos State? And if you must capture Lagos, um, what do you have on ground and how much, because I just finished talking about the issue of voter education and the onus that is on political parties to not just wait for INEC to do so or the NOA who's half past dead. Um, what is the ADC doing in terms of educating the people that they're targeting to be their voters? Well, on Friday this week on the 9th, we are unveiling our deputy uh, governorship candidates. And um, she's a retired uh, justice uh, of, the, of a legal state government. And together with Fonsha, who is the uh, gubernatorial candidate, he provides um, an opportunity to speak to the media, provides us the opportunity to let everyone know what alternative means of leadership we are providing and we can provide in the state, what transformational thoughts and ideas that we have. You see, we don't truly want to go the old route, which is, which is you know, conversing people uh, and, and, and offering them all kinds of uh, carrots and then having a stick at the back hidden when you, when you enter into government. We are going to use the caliber and the, 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 the previous achievements of our candidates to sell what we can do. Now, I already told you we have primaries where we had um, gubernatorial primaries. 
when we had representatives of all the local governments present. Basically, what it means is that we have presence in every local government. We have executives in every local government. We are people who are passionate, capable, and desiring to work. We're not going to have stolen money or money passed down from strange sources. What we are going to have is the heart and the mind of the people and a conversation, an engagement with the people that they would like to hear. And I know fully well that negotiants, 6.5 million people are registered to vote, less than 22% of them vote. It's the reason the others are not voting is because nobody's speaking to their needs. That's what we plan to focus on. Let's backtrack back to the issue uh, uh, of the national. Um, I'd like to ask, I know that um, you obviously are one of the favored ones to not be suspended, but back to the situation that has led to this suspension, what is the relationship between the national chairman and your presidential candidate? There's a tweet that was put out by your national chairman, never have I seen in the history of politicking in Nigeria, where a party's national chairman will be trolling its own presidential candidates. I'd like to read some of the things from the tweet. He said, presidential cam op campaign office, zero. Campaign vehicles, zero. Manifesto, none. Posters, none. Handbills, none. Campaign council, none. Issues and think tank committee, none. Consultations, nko, zero. ADC DNA compliance, Google Dumebi Kachiku, truth is a stubborn stain. Conscience, the battle, he says, is God. Would you care to respond to this? Because, I, like I said, there's no way for me to know if that is, um, that's not a trolling account. There's no way for me to know if that is an official well, account. Well, that's the account um, of your national chairman. Well, on Twitter. No way for me to know. I'm not saying that. Uh, well, I'm telling you that that's his account. Well, if that is the case, there's already one error I see there in the spelling of stubborn. I would think that national chairman has better command of English. So that tells me that is either somebody doing it on his behalf or somebody he's just uh, managing an account in the name of. Well, there are lots of accounts I've seen for everybody, four, five, six accounts. I don't know which is which. I really don't read those Twitter tweets. I would prefer to. But don't you think that if that tweet didn't come from him, he would have come out to let say that he didn't of, put that let tweet out? Ask, let me answer the question of favored ones. I am not favored, I do my work. I'm in Lagos State as the chairman, I do my work in Lagos State. I am very busy, I'm right now in Calabar. I'm not involved, I've not, I've not attended any of the meetings for the past two months because I've been busy running my business. I'm a businessman. So naturally, I'm not part of a lot of what's going on, but I get reports and information from my ex -cos. And then I take a position that is best for Lagos State and naturally best for the party at the national level. So I'm not um, uh, in a position in fact, let me put it this way. I'm in a position to tell the chairman of the party if he's wrong, if he's wrong. And I'm in a position to tell the candidate if they're wrong. But where my position is right now is that we can actually make peace because the issues they're bringing forth, they're not, they not substantial issues yet. They are issues of, oh, this is the way I think you should run it. No, this is where I think, these are things that leadership is required to resolve. They are not fundamental existential to the party itself. They're not about, you know, about stolen government money. They're not about, uh, you know, uh, corruption cases that, uh, you know, make people and people are really worried about. They're just about, you know, this is the way you should do it. I don't think this is the way. This is the way you should do it. I don't think this is the way. And we can resolve it with the right kind of leadership. Lagos State plans to provide that leadership. Interesting. I like how you want to sit on the fence on this matter, and I won't force you to get involved. But then I would like to quickly ask, everything that was listed on that tweet does your national leader or, I mean, your presidential candidate have all of that right now? Can you confirm to me that all of these things that were listed by the account, the Twitter account of your national chairman, are actually on ground and we can point to it? There's no way, there's no way for me to know. There's no way for but me to But you're a chairman of the, of, of the Lagos State Party, so you no, should have no, an idea. No, if your no, presidential no, candidate no, does have a team, does have a campaign no, plan, no, you should know this because no, all of this will be run by you. presidential campaign is under the office of the national ADC. The gubernatorial candidate uh, campaign is under the office of the state chairman. My focus is on my candidates. My focus is not on the presidential candidate. The presidential so you're candidate saying that the presidential candidate does not concern you, whatever he does does not concern you, nor your party? That's the job, and then he will let us know when he's ready for the campaign, what we should do, and we will do it. 
So it may be that these things are available or they're not available. And you cannot make a conclusion on the basis of tweets because it can be proven that there are billboards in some states or there are some things in some places that we don't know. There's so you're saying that your thing. national chairman could be lying and trying to make your presidential no, you candidate you look bad? You don't put those in my mouth. Like I said, I've not confirmed Well, I'm curious to understand where you're going with this. I would rather hear from him directly, my dear. <laughs> Interesting. Finally... Why should Lagosians vote for your governorship candidate? Why should Lagosians even look in the direction of the ADC? <sighs> Lagos State is 172 out of 170 cities in terms of um, development. Uh, our our current, this current status of unemployment in Lagos is extremely high. 66% of Lagosians are living uh, on the poverty line. Uh, 20 million people are moving around in Lagos. Transportation is a crash. Uh, we have a lot of issues in this state, and we think that the method of the current leadership is snail speed, and it's focusing on uh, gratification of individuals rather than attacking the problems, rather than facing the problems. That's why I keep saying people are not voting. People are not voting because they're not speaking to their problems. And what we are planning to do with ADC is that as soon as the campaign is released officially, because you know you really can't campaign until you have been allowed to campaign, we will begin to lecture and introduce those ideas in town hall meetings to the appropriate persons that this is what we have compared to what is currently on the ground. So we want to manage uh, the, you know, the process of transforming Lagos from whatever good works other people may have done in the past, including military roads, to far greater works that we are going to do as ADC. All right. Well, I want to say thank you, um, George. Uh, Ashiro is the ADC Lagos State Chairman, and he's been talking to us. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. My pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it on the show tonight. But before I go, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Now, change is an essential and unavoidable part of life. We all agree to this. But while it can be scary to think of, it is nevertheless the medicine required for the insanity of our politics. For too long, we have stagnated or we have been stagnated as a country, choosing short term gains that often feel very difficult to see. We can complain about the uncaring nature of our politicians, but are, are we ready for the work that needs, uh, you know, that we need to bring change about? What we need isn't more of the same transactional politics that involves, you know, compromise of our rights for the personal gains of our leaders. Mm -mm. It is time to look for transformational ideology from the candidates who wish to lead us. It is better to break the system uh, that does us no favors so as to start anew than for us to stay in the same kind of bad system for comfort of what we know. Mm -mm. The devil we know has had his chance. It's time to try an angel that we don't know. I'm Mary Anacle, thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.